they will all wear out like a garment. Like clothing, you will change them. And they will be discarded. But you remain the same. And your, air, your years will never end. Let's continue. To think about this God. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights... Who does not change like shifting shadows? The other scripture, Hebrews chapter 6. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor for the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain. One of the things that awaits us is the hope of heaven. That God promises that when we surrender our lives to him, we repent of our sins, and we decide that he is indeed going to be the Lord of our life. He said, I am going to wash you clean with the blood of Jesus Christ, and all your sins are going to be forgiven. Now, some of us who in this room who have been baptized into Christ remember that day very well. Nothing magical happened. I remember 32 years ago when I went down into that watery grave and I was buried into Christ and I came up out of that water I rose with joy and exaltation. Not because there was some weird thing that happened in the water, but because I said, God, I am trusting that you will keep your promise. I am trusting. And I am pledging to you that I'm going to give my life to you and I know that I'm going to fall. But I am trusting your word. I am trusting what you said. Can you, has anybody who has been disappointed in their life by someone, raise your hand. Yeah. We all have been. And that's not because People are necessarily bad people. There's, there's some people who are impossible for them to keep some promises that they made. God is not like that. And so this idea of who this God is, that he is, does not change we're going to examine those thoughts this morning. You know, when we think about the magnitude of God, it truly humbles us. There is nothing that is going to humble you as when you come face to face with God and you understand truly who he is. What was Isaiah's response? Woe to me, for I am a man of unclean lips among a people of unclean lips. You know, I, I will confess to you that there are times when I think about God and I think about heaven, I think, man, I read the scriptures and it says that they there are people just praising God all day long. 
And I thought, there are times, man, really? I mean, I enjoy praising God and everything, but all the time? Am I going to have a chance to play any golf? What about eating food? You know, there's a song that says, just a glimpse of him in glory will all the toils of this life repay. What, it, what it's saying is, just one glimpse of God will now, just a glimpse, we will now look back on all the toils in our life and say, it's worth it. Yeah. That a response when we see God is pure and utter praise. There's a humility. And if we don't come before God with humility, then I put before you, we have some issues that we have to deal with. Either your understanding and your mind needs to expand, or you need to repent of pride, or maybe even both. The medicine for every sick condition, the ointment that will heal every wound, the source of strength, that will carry every burden is when we immerse ourselves in the immensity of God. Of how great He is. And I put before you that whenever we're struggling or whenever I'm struggling, one of the first places I've got to look, how do I view God? And am I really leaning and depending on Him? I'm telling you, the ills of life gets healed. It's an ointment for the soul. I'm a lot more gracious to drivers on the road. I'm kinder to that cu customer representative that I'm talking to. That I don't think the world owes me everything. And my disposition changes. But God says, I do not change. Weather and seasons change. The moon waxes and wanes. The planets change their positions. The public concept of morality changes. Fashion change. Apparently, some of us haven't realized that, but that's another discussion for another time. <laughs> Hairstyles change. Some of us don't have hair, Dwayne, to, um, to even worry about hairstyles. <laughs> the foods we eat, popular music changes. But God is perpetually the, change, the same. He never changes. His being, the nature, the perfections cannot be altered. Nothing can be added to the infinite God. Nothing can be taken away from Him. What God is today, He always was. What God is today, He always shall be. Yeah. Here's the thing. Not only does God not change, He's eternal. Those are two real things. Guys, this concept is beyond my comprehension. I just have to go with it. Yeah. To realize that God always was. Yeah. What do you mean he, al he always was? We are so measuring time uh, in our minds about everything, yet God always was. And, and the idea when we think and contemplate about these things, it says to us, man, how immense is this God? 
that he's from eternity to eternity, changeless in his purpose and his character. We sang about it. He is the everlasting God. And so because he is the immutable God that does not change, one of the words that's used to describe this God is a, is a rock. He's a rock. As you think about Christ, the rock of ages, we sing about that song. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I'm going to talk for a few minutes just to open our minds. I cannot do justice. By the way, these, these topics, the, these attributes that we're covering from week to week, I can't do justice in a few minutes to them. The idea is that your mind will be blown. And you're going to say, that can't be true. Let me check that out. God is the same in his being. God does not owe his existence to anyone else. My clothes, my shoes that I just bought. Thank you. I now I'm winterized. <laughs> A car, money, not there's so everything I owe somebody something. God owes no one his existence. I want to think about that for a second. That's crazy. That's crazy, scary deep. There was never a time that he was not. Never a time that he was not. There will never come a time when he will cease to be. The truth is, I'm 51 years old. I'm thinking about what is the future when I'm gone with my wife and my kids? How's my relationship with my parents, my brothers and sisters? Are there any ir some relationships that I need to reconcile? I'm thinking, I I've been handed the last baton. And I will one day, not to sound morbid, Melanie doesn't like for me to talk about this. And that's why I'm talking about it when she's not here. <laughs> that I am not going to be here forever. And I know when you're young, you, 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 that is not a thought that you actually embrace. It's not, it's not something you, that, that you even think about. And that's OK. It really is OK. I'm not saying you necessarily should. If you do, great. If you don't, also great. But one of the things about a 51-year-old, I will one day cease. I will cease to, God will never cease to exist. Animals have evolved. God will never evolve. God is at this very moment, all that God is rather, at this very moment, he has ever been and he ever will be. He cannot change for the better. Think. I can change for the better. I should change for the better. I need to change for the better. I don't think you need to say uh, that. that. <laughs> Why were you so readily saying I've never seen the crowd shake their heads in unison to anything I've said so far since I've been here. Can you imagine God never, will never get better? Because he can't. God is neither young nor old. He simply is. 
God is utterly unaffected by things that happen outside of himself. When the angels rebelled against God and showed their pride, God didn't panic. He provided a plan for us all. There are no temporary changes in God. He does not have to keep up with the times. Man, every time a new phone comes out, I am utterly frightened. Because I've got to learn something else. And people look at my phone and say, Tony, you know you have to at least get into the 21st century. <laughs> And one of the reasons I have this phone is because I, I'm scared of having another one. Let me just tell you. God doesn't have to keep up with the times. He does not have to revert back to what he was. Improvement, deterioration is impossible with God. He's perpetually the same. He's altogether uninfluenced by what happens in heaven or in outer space or in hell or anywhere or any place on earth. I told you guys I just um, moved back from the United States. America is a great country. But it is stunning to me as a Canadian. at least from my perception, that politics play such an integral part of people's lives that most people, and dare I say people who call themselves Christians, view, this, view themselves, at least portray themselves by what po political party affiliation they are. And to realize somehow Whoever is in the White House, we got to make sure the right person's in the White House. As if we think that that is going to affect us. And some of us, in our lives, things affect us. And to realize, you know, God is not worried about who is in the White House or not at all. He's not saying, oh my goodness, we better get the right one in there or else something's going to happen and we're going to all die. <laughs> He's unaffected. I want you to think about that. Next scripture. I want to read, uh, and I am sure of this, that who he began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Here's one of the great things about God, is that he's able to do what he promised, and he will complete what he promised. He's able to do it. In the book of Isaiah, it says this. Remember this. We don't need to turn there. I don't think I have that one. Fix it in mind. Take it to heart. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is no one like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. My purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. From the east I summon a bird of prey. From a far off land a man called to fulfill my purpose. What I have said, that I will bring about. What I have planned, that I will do. Why do we look at these things? Why do God say these things? It's because he wants to, to, to really show off his power? No. He wants to give us assurance. To say, hey, listen, there is no God like me. You know that God of money? That promises something that it can't fulfill? That it promises you peace and happiness? And it lies? 
It lies to you. And so this morning, what I wanted to do is to expand our minds. If for, for us to be a people who think about their God and not just come here simply to be fed. We, Job says he stands alone. Who can oppose him? The flight of time does not change him. There's no wrinkles on his, eye, on his forehead. His power can never diminish. His glory cannot fade. The, the God we have worshipped today is the same God that created everything in the beginning. The God who spoke to Adam and Eve. The God of Noah and Abraham and the patriarchs. The God of Elijah and the prophets. This is the God we're having dealings with and who is dealing with us this very moment. There is simply no change in him whatsoever. Whatever perfections God were before the world was called into existence, they are exactly the same at this very moment. Here's some more food for thought. Was he powerful? Was he God, the mighty God, when he spoke the world into existence by mere thought? Would he, was he the omnipotent that separated sky from earth and sea from dry land? Yes, he was powerful then, and there's no weakness in his arms today. He is the same giant in his might. The great colossus of the universe. Here's one. He does not need to exercise. <laughs> he does not need to diet. He has no personal trainer to keep him fit. Was God wise when he constituted the cosmos? The sun, the planning its size and its distance from us, and the axis on which he spun the earth, at the exact speed he had chosen, and the ring of air and ozone around the earth, and the trajectory at which the planets move around the sun, especially the planet earth? Was he wise in his design of the atom and the living things when he spoke, when he just made us as he did? Yes. Had he wisdom when he purposed to allow the fall of man and then plan through the incarnation and suffering of his son as a lamb of God to redeem the world and to make a new heaven, a new earth, and a new humanity to fill them? God has been just and will always be just. Was he just when Adam and Eve rebelled? Yes. Was he just? while waiting at the time of Noah for 120 years? Was he just when he dealt with Sodom and Gomorrah? Was he just when Pharaoh continued to say no? Was God just when his son hung upon the cross? When he was made sin for us who knew no sin? Did God spare him? No. Because he's just. Because the Savior bore our sins in his own body on the tree. And God bruised him that we might be spared. God was just and holy in the past, and he's just and holy today. Was God good when he made skins to clothe Adam and Eve? Was God good when he forgave King David his lust and murder? Was the Lord good when he recommissioned Peter and, and blessed his preaching at Pentecost? And 3,000 were baptized that day? Was he good in showing mercy to Saul of Tarsus? God is good. These things, he has not changed. He is unchangeably good and generous and benevolent. His strong love is always there for us like a rock unmoved by the hurricanes of our iniquity. 
was God love when he first covenant, uh, made a covenant, covenant to save a company of sinners more than any man could number and take them all to heaven and transform everyone into the image of Jesus Christ? Was he good when he knew that it would be such, at a, such a cost and he still kept loving his own? He did not shun paying a price. Whatever perfection, God, whatever perfection of God you can think of, then it may be said, whether in the dark past or in the bright future, he is the Lord and he does not change. Do you ever fall into the trap of, man, is God done using me? So that God has a purpose for us in the Ottawa, in, the, in this city. We came, eyes wide open, hearts pumping, legs running, eyes wide open. Let me ask you a question. 20 years later, how are you feeling? Did God change? Has he lost power? So I want you to really think about that. What do you think what do you think about the future? Remember, how you view God says everything about how you're going to handle the future. And so this morning, I wanted to whet your appetite. What I wanted to do is to tell you that God is faithful to his promises. He cannot lie. Like, it's not, like we choose to lie or tell the truth. That's a choice we make. God cannot lie. And therefore the promises that he make, and that's why we have the spirit and the attitude that we do about our God. And so, as we think and meditate on the goodness of God as we take communion, and to think about God not sparing his own son because of his justice. I know I've shared this before. I cannot imagine having the power to stop my son dying a death, like dying a death on the cross. And yet because of God's justice. But here's my concern, people. This is my concern. In modern Christianity, a lot of us like to convert God. The just God is a thing of the past. The loving God and the good God, I'm all for that. I want you to think about this. If God did not spare his own son, And yet in that one act, not only was justice served, but love and goodness flowed. And the idea is not so that you can be scared and weirded out, but to understand who God is. And so we embrace this time of reflection as we take the Lord's Supper today of books and television stations 
and songs, there is no end to Christian music, Christian books, Christian preachers. Whatever brand of Christianity you embrace, you can find it. And I mean whatever brand. And if you don't like the brands that you see, start your own. And somehow, somewhere, we think God has changed. We think he's a gentler. That God somehow in the New Testament becomes a Christian. <laughs> oh, and I know, I, uh, of course, you know I'm being facetious. But you know what I'm talking about. And so this idea that God being unchangeable ought to bring about a security in us, but also a reverence and an awe. And to realize that death on the cross accomplished so much. And because of that death, we long to hear the words, well done my good and faithful servant. Let us pray. God, we're just so grateful that you did not spare even your own son because you are a just God and the penalty of sin needed to be paid. And yet at the same time, through that sacrifice of your one and only begotten son, we now are able to, to see your goodness, your love, your mercy, your compassion, your grace, your redemption, your ransoming of us. And Father, we're so grateful that we can count on you, that you will never disappoint us, that you will ha act rightly every single time. That there's no time that you're going to have to come back to us and say, I'm sorry I was a little harsh. I'm sorry I loved you too much. That you're going to just do the right thing at the right time, that you're perfectly patient. You're perfectly kind. Help us to contemplate the death, burial, and resurrection of the son that you did not spare his name we offer up this prayer. Amen.